Hi everybody, thanks for tuning in. So in this video I want to talk a little bit about uh, an important piece of uh, astrophotography gear. It's the focusers, what we use to get our images uh, crystal clear, get those uh, nice uh, round stars. Uh, if you've been watching my earlier videos, I have uh, shown you this telescope before. Uh, as of now, I have upgraded it with a new focuser. Uh, this Newtonian telescope, the TS Optics Photon, came with a 2-inch monorail Crayford focuser. Uh, my imaging train isn't that heavy, but uh, around 2 kilograms. Uh, and that was enough to make the focuser struggle a bit when I was doing my autofocus uh, routines. It had problem with the pushing the focus tube up. So I have upgraded the telescope with uh, this uh, new giant 3-inch RNP focuser. It's a Rackham Pinion focuser. Uh, this focuser comes with a built-in tilt plate and a 360 degrees uh, rotating possibility as well. So I can make sure that my frame is perfectly lined up every time I go and take pictures of different objects. This refractor also comes with a rack and pinion focuser. It's a two and a half inch, uh, if I recall right. Uh, and this will also help, uh, help me when I'm imaging because with the refractor, you usually have your imaging train all the way in the back of the telescope so that uh, the payload will always drag down uh, with the gravitational force. So let's uh, jump on in. The first focuser I want to talk about is the Crayford focuser. It's a common focuser. Uh, it's been around for ages. Uh, the Crayford focuser is uh, made up uh, with, a, you can call it a drive shaft or just a steel rod. Uh, compressing to the focuser tube or a focusing plate and with the, the, the force uh, pushing those two together you can uh, adjust your focus. The Crayford focuser is uh, really nice and smooth uh, operating it. It's a very precise focuser, you have really small adjustment you can do. It has a tendency to have a bit of a lower payload capacity than the rack and pinion focusers, uh, simply because it's uh, using force to hold two different objects together. So the friction between them is mainly the thing that is uh, holding your payload equipment. Uh, but overall, a uh, really nice uh, focuser and it all really depends on what you are trying to do. So if you've been uh, watching my latest video, you probably know that my uh, most expensive upgrade uh, astrophotography wise and life in general has been uh, the apartment we have bought but uh, in this uh, clip I want to show you guys what I consider the best upgrade I have ever done when it comes to astrophotography it's not the most expensive one uh, it's neither the cheapest one it's kind of in the middle uh, but it has uh, helped my imaging nights and my imaging run uh, be a lot smoother and uh, give me more efficient photographing time uh, overall. It's this uh, little box. This one is from uh, Pegasus Astro. Uh, they make uh, different kind of astrophotography gear. This is the Focus Cube version 2. Uh, overall, uh, when it comes to an imaging night, you can start like here in Norway, it gets dark pretty early. So I can set up my gear and probably start imaging at around 9 o'clock. Uh, and once it goes past midnight and it gets colder and colder, you can see some shift in your focus because of the temperature that changed. Uh, it could also be flexure in your scope and other things that uh, makes your imaging or images a bit blurry. Uh, but with this one, I'm doing autofocus routines uh, like once every hour uh, and it has uh, really helped me get those uh, crisp images all night long. Uh, 
Uh, I have already uh, put it up on the new uh, refractor here, though I haven't used it. It's going to be nice to see. Uh, and uh, that's uh, what I would uh, recommend if you're trying to figure out what you want to spend your money on. Uh, this hobby is an expensive one once you get started, but uh, you will also have a lot of fun and joy from it. Uh, so that's my tip for the best upgrade. Uh, if you guys have any things you want to tip uh, the viewers about, leave them in the comment section. Maybe you can also tell us about uh, what your worst upgrade was or what your least favorite upgrade is. The rack and pinion focuser is made up with a rack or plate connected to the focusing tube. This can be either machined or cast depending on the quality of the focuser. The gear is connected to the adjustment knobs so you can adjust the focuser. This RMP focuser has a micro reduction as well for extra precise focusing. Some may argue that this focuser can be prone to backlash, imaging shift when adjusting focus and not as precise as Crayford focusers. But in my experience, they work great and are a reliable tool for my astrophotography. Feel free to leave your thoughts in the comment section and let's help our community get a better understanding of what focuser to look for depending on their setup. Again, sorry for making this video a bit longer than usual, but hopefully you found it interesting and maybe even got an idea about what to look for when it comes to focuser for your next upgrade or telescope. Let's leave you guys with a little time lapse from my first light with the photo line 80mm and some rough edits of old photos with almost no calibration whatsoever. All taken at the old balcony here in Oslo. Until next time, keep looking up in the night sky and clear skies. Oh, and in case you haven't done it yet, why don't you go ahead and subscribe to my channel and maybe even giving this video a thumbs up if you like it.